check. All right, we should be uh, live. Going to show you guys Muirfield Village here with the Unicore IXO. Haven't gone live on uh, on YouTube in a while, so I figured what uh, what better time than now? Why not? We'll get started here in just a few minutes. I would have loved uh, to hit more than one driver, but getting uh, getting kind of late here in Michigan, so I figured why not just fire things off here. Love to answer any questions you guys might have. Haven't uh, done anything live and haven't used the IXO in just a little bit here, so uh, I had several people asking about the IXO stuff. Uh, several people asking about TGC and the Unicor IXO, and so I figured uh, perfect, you know, Hello thing there. just to go My live really John. quick, I'd like to play some to holes for you guys. And today we Wonder if that, that chat's forward. not too bad. I figured it was Let's going to uh, block in a fair way. Take it from there. the Let's map go. a little bit there. That's not too bad though. Man, I haven't played TGC in so long. Um, I've just been busy covering some new content. And, uh, you know, there's only so much I can do. And then also get, you know, my outdoor golf in because it's summertime now. So, uh, you know, I've been trying to go outside and play some real golf. Lucky to still do that with obviously everything that's going on. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and fire a drive off. Hopefully we can get something decent down there. This track is a pretty, pretty tough one. Never played it before. All right, I'll take that. Nice looking shot. Yeah, so if anybody has any questions, you know, it's always tough to know when people are going to be on or if they're going to get the alert. But it's always, uh... oh, Jeremiah, what's up, man? Going live with TGC 2019 and the Unicor IXL. Um, I know everybody wants me to compare the IXL to Quad. Do you want to know why I haven't done it yet? And I knew people were going to ask that. So I kind of thought about it ahead of time. So I've, I've done a little bit, you know, I've done, uh, I've honestly been exploring Quad more than anything um, because it's new to me. Never had the unit, you know, so I'm, uh, you know, digging into it, learning about it. But the problem I have is they're, you know, they're two great units. They serve a totally different purpose. One's mounted, one's portable. Um, you know, I, I feel like I'm going to do this. If I do a comparison, everybody just, just wants to nitpick. Everything that I see online is, you know, just everybody wanting to say, well, this one, you know, is a half a degree this, and when this one's 100 RPM this. And I mean, I think both of them, I, you guys have already seen demonstrations I've done. I think both of them, are very good units. I think they serve a great purpose at their own value and unique things they offer. And uh, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm going to do a head-to-head -head comparison. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, I try to do demonstrations, you know, as always, try not to get my opinion in the middle of it all. And, uh, you know, I feel like the minute I release that video, everybody's going to, you know, want to say, well, you know, I saw this and blame something on me and I'm not some laboratory, you know, benchmarking type guy. I'm a demonstration guy. I always has been that way here in the channel. I've done some heads up stuff, but very generic. Be good. Be good. A little too much. I was worried about that. I was worried about that. That was almost, that was like nine, nine yards, 10 yards too far. Darn it all. Good drive. To the hole. So yeah, I knew I knew a million people were gonna ask that question, and uh, I've been I've been honestly covering some great content that a ton of people have really appreciated, and uh, I'm trying to cover all that. That's what I'm trying to do, rather than trying to be this you know head to head you know uh, competition that always seems to be going on. It seems like never no one will ever settle down with uh, you know what they think is better. Um, and it just, it gets too many opinions and, you know, it has to do so much with your space. 
and what your purpose is, you know, and what your use is. I think that everybody knows that it doesn't matter if you're buying a $2,000 system, if it serves your, your purpose, uh, that's what's important. You know, I want to, I mean, I talk a lot to viewers through email and everything about if something will work for them, if it will serve their purpose. And uh, I think that's what's so important. 31 feet, two inches downhill. Man, I really blew that by. My wedge was this. I hit that crisp. What's that image look like? I have the image of IXO up there. I mean, I, I hit that well, I think. And I want to make sure I don't miss any uh, chat up there. I'll stop here after this putt. All right, 31 feet. Got it there. Hole here. Come on. Nicely done with the long putt. Sunk a 31 footer? That's not like me. Even in real life, I don't Third sink putts like that. You're at one under. Man. So, I mean, Far at the Memorial here. Tournament it's right nice now, that would have made the draw. cut if I could pull this off, right? Is that all? Actually, it didn't even take that. What was it, like three over or something? Something crazy. Um, all right, what do we got coming in here? I don't really want to buy something that isn't accurate, and that's why I want to see the comparison. Uh, leaning QED moment. But see, that's the problem. I mean, not not problem. It, it, all all of these mid to higher end, you know, units are accurate to a certain degree. One, it depends on if your environment will allow it to be accurate and if it's being used properly. I think that's very important to understand. Um, but I think most of these units have already proven themselves to be accurate to a degree. Uh, and it's usually a degree of budget, that's for sure. Um, I mean, I've proven the, my HD golf system in here to be uh, very accurate. I mean, I have people that can literally go outside and hit flags. Like, here's how far my nine iron goes. And just boom, just land the ball there. They come down here, we do the same thing. And, uh, you know, and that's what, you know, that has to do with distance. And it has to do with spin. They know how much they spin the ball. Um, are they saying, I, you know, my launch angle is a specific degree and everything? Um, no, they're not. But, you know, is, what's your purpose? I mean, are you fitting clubs? Because when you're getting into, you know, measurements as far as, you know, dynamic loss, angle of attacks and all that, um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't even think that I'm qualified at my level to really get into, you know, those type of measurements and tell you if, if, if this angle of attack at 3.5 degrees you know, is, uh, you know, precisely accurate. And, and that's even more of a reason for me not to, I've never pushed people towards products. I've demonstrated them. I answer questions. I want to make sure that I can try to help them, you know, steer to what works for them. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, I've noticed the angle of attack is uh, 0.7 degrees, you know, lower on this unit based on my testing. I mean, heck, I'm an amateur golfer. I don't think that's my place. I'll be honest. Um, my only nitpick with Foresight Gear is the added prices and software transfer to user. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they, that's, that's how it works. I mean, that's flat out. I mean, when I got my invoice, I mean, it was broken right down, you know, quad is listed at 11 grand. Um, you want club head data? Uh, what is it? 2,500 bucks. I want to say I'm getting all confused now or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm off the top of my head, but yeah, that's how they price things. Cause you know, a lot of people don't buy the club head data. A lot of people buy a quad and the ball that is a lot of data and then you can use it for, uh, simulation, you know, so it's, I mean, and then the transfer fee, I don't understand the transfer fee. I mean, if you're buying it for yourself, it's a, you know, just a transfer to someone else. I mean, you know, track man, everybody does that. Um, James, how's it going? It's going good, man. Brad what happened. I was thinking about playing the whole man. Uh, that's, that's, you know, I just, I don't know why I just decided in the middle of nowhere. Too bad. We could have jumped on and played each other. Oh, uh, Brad's a new owner of an IXO. You know, you enjoying it or what? Tell me, uh, tell me how it's treating you. All right, let's see here. Can I get another drive down there? So I think these, it's all about these greens, right? They're small. They're, they're in real life. They're, they're hard. You know, you can see people hitting these greens and just the ball, just not checking up, bouncing over all kinds of stuff. I, I you know, witnessed out there watching, I didn't get to watch a lot of the tournament, but, uh, man, I mean, I posted something today talking about the definition of golf. Bryson DeChambeau wins a tournament, goes out there, is in contention, 
And then he gets a 10. Whew. Man, that, that's golf right there. Oh, two drives down the middle? Jeez. Take me out for some skins right now. What's going on? Appreciate everybody tuning in. I think we got a, a truckload of uh, viewers already. I'd say so, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys tuning in. Or so to the appreciate here. you guys chatting. Sorry the chat's covering up the little math down there. I didn't know how to lay things out tonight. I threw it up quick. I threw it up pretty quick there. All right. 105. Based on that last shot, I know what I'm doing here. I don't want to. I really don't want to. Get this thing. How is that ball impact on that driver? A little high on the face? Sounded like it. A little towards the heel. It wasn't wasn't the most amazing. That face to path was Oh uh, no. I'll take those straight drives that don't go that far all day long. I mean that's that's me. I'm not I mean I can hit a drive out there sometimes. I bombed a few outdoor uh, last weekend, but I'm uh, definitely not stressing about distance with my drive. I just want to be in play. I'd love to hear what you guys think about the simulation play, if you have one, uh, how it's transferring outdoors. I've been I've been really happy. I played a lot of simulation golf this winter. I mean I can go outdoor and I and I can say, all right, is this gonna go this far? And it's been it's been amazing. It's really helped the game. Uh, stupid mistakes is what has hurt my game outdoor, you know. Just poor sand shots and things that you're never going to be able to do anything with in a simulator. Oh, like that. Like a thin, just terrible shot. Thin to win, I guess. Oh, look at that. That was just a poor, nice. poor swing. What was that? Talking too much. Not paying attention. And if this drops, I'll take it, though. Here. I'll take it. Brad says, I'm really enjoying the IXO, the swing optics cameras, but I still go back to the quad and play. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's me in a nutshell. Everybody thinks I'm uh, I'm crazy. I got all this equipment. You know, what do you play the most? And I tell them all. It, <laughs> I'm probably, you know, the wrong, wrong person to ever ask, what do you like the most? Because I'm such a sucker for technology. I just, I mean, a lot of people know that. I mean, a lot of people that have been watching the channel now for almost a year uh, know that, I mean, I'm a tech guy. So I like, I appreciate everything, you know, even like a little cheap device that can put out a carry or something, I think is, you know, neat, whatever you want to call it. But, um, so what do we got here? Trying to decide between TGC 2019 and E6 Connect for use as a simulator for my wife, son, and I, any opinions? Well, I will tell you that one, they're both great in their own way. They're very different. I feel like a lot of people like the graphics in TGC. A lot of people like the ball characteristics and kind of like the true play of E6 because you got to remember TGC is essentially a, an Xbox game, you know, um, and not knocking it at all. It's just the, these are facts. These aren't really opinions. Um, TGC has a lot of courses, and I play quite a few of them with my kids because people design. I, I actually did a video. Uh, Someone that's a SkyTrack user, I want to say, uh, designed this uh, kids versus parents course, and the kids always want to play it. And, you know, E6 is more of that, you know, like serious golfer. They don't have a lot of stuff. Um, and so if it's really about the wife and kids getting them in the simulator, that's a big deal to me. I want them in here. We want to be having fun. Um, I, that's, a, that's a big deal. So TGC can be really useful for that type of stuff. Doesn't mean it's not coming for E6, but E6, in my opinion, might be a little more for the serious golfer. Even though a serious golfer could really enjoy TGC, feel free to chime in, anybody that's in the comments there. I love getting your guys' opinion. That's why the live stone, 24 feet, one inch uphill. Oh, did I blow it by? Oof. That's going to leave me a long putt. Now, why did that run so fast? I don't feel like the last one ran that fast. Damn. That was just me, I guess. Here we go. Let's drop this. Now you far. notice how uh, they updated view to have the putter, so you guys are seeing the putter now. It doesn't. That impact is not not uh, 
not true, just so you guys understand. That's just an image. Um, Jay, have you been impressed with what you've seen with GC Pro? Great question. Um, it's tough to say because I've seen like these random videos and they're obviously working on it. And like the graphics kind of look good to me, um, you know, from what I can see. Um, ball characteristics, I've seen, you know, they're, they're working on them a lot, it seems like. I saw some big bounces like TGC. Um, I mean, I'm not knocking it a bit. I think it has big potential. Um, I think a lot of people are excited about it. The tough part is, is I was never a Jack Nicklaus, uh, what is it, JNPG, um, Jack Nicklaus Pro Golf. I never played that. So a lot of people are comparing it to that, and I can't compare it to that. I've never played it. Um, so that uh, that's interesting. Um, I, I wish I could demo it, and I and, uh, haven't been able to. I think it's a lot of GC2 users that are demoing it. I know a lot of people are following it, and uh, I'm very interested in seeing it. And you know, it's so tough to, uh, you know, there were some screen recordings done, and they, they looked okay. They didn't have a high enough recording bit rate, in my opinion, because when the ball was moving, I saw a lot of blurriness. I try to record in a super high bit rate. Um, so my, you know, usually my screen recordings are pretty clear. It's sometimes, sometimes not the best. I'm sure you guys have seen some that aren't, uh, aren't the best could be improved, but so it's tough. It's really tough to comment on that. I don't know a lot about it either. This is tough. Get in the hole, please. Oh, what did that wow. burn the lip? I mean, that, that must've been on fire. Wish that first putt was that good. All right, what else we got coming in here? I love the comments, guys. Feel free for others to chime in. Tell me what you saw on GC Pro. I haven't even watched all the. I think it's GS Pro, isn't it? Not GC Pro. Is that what you're talking about? The GS Pro software. I think that's what you're you're talking about. By the way, um, Michael says, are the physics gameplay better in one than the other? You know, it, E6. I think if you talk to most people, plays a little more true. Um, than TGC. I mean, you're watching TGC right now. Um, the distances and even the ball flight's decent. Um, the, the ball flight varies from E6 and the, the, the ball characteristics, you know, like when you're chipping onto the green and, and uh, the bounce from driver and these different things, that's where I, I see some differences in TGC and E6. A lot of people respect E6 ball physics. They have a little bit of a high spin issue right now they're working on. If you land the ball with high spin over like 9K and you land it on a slope of a green, what happens is, is whatever's going on in an algorithm, the high spin and the hill like shoot the ball back. And that's one of the very few complaints I have about E6. And they're working on it. They're working on it. Simulation is about mimicking as best it can to real life is at the heart of my decision. Hence why I haven't made my purchase yet. I haven't seen the Unicore systems compared to the quad. I respect that. You know, if simulation to you is accuracy and you're talking like every data point and everything, here's what I would suggest. I would suggest that you find uh, some demo centers that have them both. And I suggest that you use them both. Because if it's that important to you that you know how each of them performs for your swing and what you expect, I think you need to go hit them. You know, simple as that. I mean, I show a lot in this channel. I don't know if there's another channel that does as much demonstration with different hardware and software. And that's what my goal is to you guys, to provide you as much as I can. So even when I've had people tell me I've used quad four times and I've used, you know, uh, uh, flight scope four times and track man and, and, and I'm watching all your videos like they go through all of that to confirm if you're that serious about you know measurements and, and everything to what your liking is and you got to understand it still goes back to what I'm explaining what the use is for the user your purpose you know Brad and I've talked about this you know, Brad's the owner of a quad and a, and a Unicor IXO are you going to take it outside you know do you like throwing it down do you have left-handed players that you you, you know, you move it back and forth for and it's easy or how's your ceiling and your install and um, so many things. Do you see yourself adding the putting on GC Quad down the road? Because it has all this wild putting. I've just started to use it. It's, it's crazy. I'm, all those are things you have to ask yourself. And everybody is so different. You know, and I try to cater my best to, uh, you know, a lot of people. 
but oh man look at this i almost just have to hit like a like a five iron down there that's interesting um there's no right answer for an individual you know david says have you looked at x plot i have seen x plot i have not used x plot yes i looked into it a little bit and uh I, they sent me an email at one point i want to say i think it was x plot i don't know i have so many people that reach out to me for random things um so maybe we'll demonstrate x plot at some point eric says he lives in south lyon that's a riot um Man, I'm, I'm right here. I'm like south of Flint, in between Flint and Detroit. You know, you're not far from me. Um, do you know any local IXO dealer that you could try out in person? You know, there was a Unicor dealer in Michigan. Um, but I don't think they're in, in Michigan anymore. And I don't think there's, I'm trying to think, you know what, let me, let me get a hold of, shoot me an email. My email's in the description and it's up in the, the chat and everything. Shoot me an email because I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll find that out for you. I mean, there may even not be a dealer, but someone that uh, has an install here in a commercial facility so I could get you a demo, you know? Um, Eric says, looking to buy the IX, we'll currently have SkyTrack, but really want to try it out. Yeah, that's a that's a big, uh, why am I pulling out a driver? I just said I need to lay up with five iron. Um, sorry, I'm talking a lot. Uh, if you're going from a two grand unit to a 10 grand unit, um, yeah, you do need to take your time. Um, and there's been a lot of stepping stones in the marketplace. You know, there was major gaps before and, that, and they're starting to be closed. And, uh, you know, they all provide such a different, this is on five wood. I usually change this to iron. Um, you know, every, every level of budget seems to offer different things. And that's a, that's a major jump. You know, um, there must be a reason you're thinking IXO versus QED, which meets in the middle at six grand starting point. Um, you know, let me know if you got questions on that. <laughs> that was fat. That was, that was like the, nice off the I mean, it's going to work, but a little fat. Huh, look at that roll out. Okay, good thing I didn't crisp that into the water, I guess. I mean, it wasn't that fat, but look at it. Yeah, you can just, you can't quite tell. That looks like a pretty good ball strike right there. Not really, but. So to the pin here um looking to buy the ixl oh, okay sorry uh quad is accepted as standard so it makes perfect sense to see the comparison um well i mean great i mean that's uh that's fantastic i mean i i, I think that there are way too many hardcore opinions right now and uh you know um i haven't made the decision to put them head to head yet so if someone else wants to fantastic go for it um but, you know, the funny part is, is all you're doing is comparing ball data. Both of them require fiducials. You can't even compare uh, clubhead data. Both require totally different fiducials. So all you're really getting is like a carry and spin comparison, which everybody knows they're, with, they're both within reasonable tolerance and carry and spin. I mean, heck, I, I called out my numbers when I was doing demonstrations. I mean, I can hit every, dem every you know, uh, distance right now. On, on IXO on TGC and I can do it with my quad so other than someone trying to say well I feel like my spins a little higher or lower which come on I mean no one's Tiger Woods in here you know uh, throwing wedges up there so honestly what what are you looking for in the comparison you can't compare club data they both require different fiducials and that might be something a lot of people are missing I mean I've demonstrated both uh, both are completely capable of showing you what they're capable of showing um, but yeah, that's, I guess that's, that's interesting. Um, I mean, everybody knows, heck, a lot of these lower end units are, are pretty good about, uh, distances for the most part. Um, I think a lot of QED users are, are very happy with distances. I don't know if 106 yards, I just feel like that's so in between for me. I'm going to end up talking to myself and blowing over a green. Let's see how this works. I'm just going to play it a little safe. Be good. Get down. All right. I'd, I'd say I played that the right way. Hey, the Not a gimme, though, is it? What is that? Um. Okay, let's see what you can do with his eight-footer. 
Michael says still live. Yeah, why are you not seeing it live? What's going on? I'm I'm watching it on YouTube. I have my phone streaming uh, right next to me, just to make sure, and it looks good. So if something's wrong, let me know. But yes, we are definitely still live. Someone else chime in on the chat if there's issues, please. I'll be honest, I haven't been live in a while, so I, I mean. I'm sitting here like, did I screw something up? <laughs> um, all right, what do we got going on here? 12 foot putt. I need to sink this. 12 feet. I like this course so far. I mean, it's it's nothing crazy. Guarantee it plays way harder in real life. Man. I mean, that's feel like left edge is where it's at. If uh, if someone else is is streaming, I mean I'm streaming and I've got this fine, but Michael is uh, the last person to chat, so I don't know. All right, twelve feet. Get in. And My potting is on fire tonight. I haven't played TGC in a while and just, uh, was that a birdie? And yeah, we're one under. Sweet, oh now everybody's chatting. Everybody's chatting it up. Paul says, yeah, still live. Love my QED. Oh man, I love that close up camera view. That's why I put it on for you guys. I figured you'd like that. Jeremiah, all good, thank you. I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, it's crystal clear on my phone sitting here watching so man we got a truckload of viewers thanks for tuning in guys it's awesome i figured you know saturday night not a bad uh not a bad night to throw some stuff up you know 132 see how small these greens are though like i mean i could see in real life where's that uh one par three it's, i'm trying to remember where it was that everybody was struggling with that wind though i have no wind on right now so let's let's not give myself too much of uh, you know credit here for for playing well because they were dealing with wind like no other. Michael, you've asked me like ten times, buddy, and I just talked about this for I can't tell you how long. There's nothing to really test. I've tested everything. Everybody, and and, and it's only a handful of people that want this comparison. There's nothing to test. I've shown both units. They both hand out good carries. They both hand out good numbers. You can't compare the club data. They they both have different fiducials. So I don't feel that it's right in my environment for what I do. I demonstrate products. I don't sit here and try to nitpick and benchmark and go to Leo mode. I love Leo. He's a pleasure to talk to. I mean, he's a great guy. We chat all the time. You want benchmarking and you want crazy stuff like that. I mean, you go to him. But, you, I mean, for what these units offer, one, they're very unique. They're, they're totally different. Um, and you, you, you can't compare club data. They, they use independent fiducials. I, I know one thing. I'm not going to sit here and stripe seven irons for you, five in a row, five in a row, with uh, and, and switch out fiducials and, you know, with the same club. I don't have two sets of the same club or anything like that. It's just not me i mean that's not that's not me so um i've demonstrated both products significantly at this stage and i'll continue to demonstrate both of them just like i'm doing now but but this this head-to-head -head that everybody's asking for i don't think is really ad ad admissible <laughs> i just don't see that that doing anything so i guess that's my opinion i mean uh you know and i'm not trying to you know tick anybody off i appreciate everybody watching the channel 132. Ah, I think it's going to draw hard. Yep. I meant to start that a little right. Darn it all. Nice. I hope I hope that really uh, all we want is spin axis and carry yardage. Well, you've already seen spin axis and carry yardage for the other two units, but... Um, I mean, like I said, I'm not a spin axis guy. I'm not, I'm not hitting balls perfectly and everything else. I mean, I think that's something for one of your, you know, lab scientist guys to do. 
and unless I change my mind, but that's where I'm at today because neither of them can get, I mean, however Unicor IXO, you know, works individually. I mean, they said they need club head stickers to get their full data other than just ball data for simulation. And I, and uh, QED says the same thing. Or not QED, uh, GC Quad says the same thing, you know? So, um, I mean, I get it, Finn, you know, but I mean, I, like I said, I just don't think that's, uh, it really is something for what my channel's purpose is. All right, no, look at this. How, what am I gonna do here? This is where it gets. Uh, Alan says, I missed the question. That's not good. Hey, you missed my question. Any Meeple Plus insights coming out? Well, I guess you'll have to define insights. <laughs> I talk to those guys often. We had a, uh, uh, what do you call that? A Skype, we had a Skype call. Uh, I had a Skype call with the head developer and uh, I, I don't know if uh, he's like one of the head head customer support guys. They're 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 cool guys over at Flightscope. I'll tell you what, uh, South Africa, um, you know they're they're dealing with lockdown stuff still. Now they're trying to produce units and everything. We talked about a couple things. I gave them some feedback. They're working hard. You know, brand new product, fast launch, COVID nineteen. Right as you launch your product, like I just feel the pain. You know, um, they're doing a great job. They're working on a lot of things. Pushed out some updates in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, coming out of COVID, and uh, are is there insights that I can you know talk to you about right now? I don't think so. No, there's not uh, nothing nothing coming you know tomorrow that that I need to fill you in on. Other than there's been a lot of talk about setup, and I've tried to clarify that as best I can. Um, man, a guy fired back at me in the Evo Plus group today, and all I was trying to tell him is is like, why would you not follow the manufacturer's recommendation? And he like came back saying like I was you know not providing insight. I'm, I'm providing insight. You want the best results? Follow the OEM recommendations. Don't ask if you cannot. You know, like in my opinion, I, I so a good good time to bring that up. You know, it's like guys, if there's OEM recommendations, like and if you can't follow them, try what allow you know is allowed in your situation. But the, the subject we were talking about was like pointing the dot and you know using the dot and putting, and these are all things that have already been defined. Like do what the manufacturer tells you to do. You know, um, if 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 you can. You know, so, um, so anyway, uh, Michael says not many people have the benefit of having both. I understand. I understand. Um, I have placed an order for one of these. I wanted one for game improvement and love to have, uh, if you purchase an IXO, I think so. I think it's a great product. Um, I think it has great value. I don't even know where to put this guys. Can someone give me some insight? <laughs> I don't know where to put this. I mean, it like, it breaks hard out of the gate and then it like dies right off and almost breaks a tiny bit left. I mean, and it's a 20 foot putt. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna aim like really far left because I feel like that it's, it's gonna lose all that break, you know? This is tough. This is tough and it's a 26 putt. I will tell you that I used uh, putting data to improve my putting lately and it's really made a big difference. I can't believe my angle of attack and my putting setup was so bad, I was sitting down on the ball. And I'll tell you what, if you haven't got a lesson in a while, and whatever you're struggling with, driver, putting, sand, whatever it is, go to your PGA professional and get a lesson. I mean, these guys are just good. Get a good one, obviously, one that works with you well. Oh, it did, it did go crazy. Yeah, is what it is. Is what it is. I didn't want to blow it by because the way it was. I, I can probably sink this next putt. Let's see what we can do. This is what it is. As I'm talking about putting, right? Hey, one under for the round. Oh, what else is everybody saying? Uh, okay. I agree with Michael. Five. Oh, we are not going to get it. <laughs> well, Steven, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Uh, I mean, I've demoed both, both of these. I knew that every, the minute I went live, I knew everybody was going to blow up. You know, I want head to head. I want head to head. Um, while we are on any updates, any QED news, well, I can tell you that QED does have club head stickers coming. People were asking that question and, you know, I did ask them directly and there are club head stickers coming. Uh, I don't have a date for that. Um, you know, I know that they obviously had a big launch themselves. Um, man, I don't like that water over there. I'm not a fan of water. Let's see what we can do. Maybe right there. All right. Um, so current QED users obviously asking for clubhead uh, stickers for you know some 
primarily, I think, uh, I'm trying to think what, what primarily you'd want the club head stickers for. Probably club head speed, I think, is what's going to help them measure, which everybody saw a little off. Even even Unicorn really said, listen, our club head speed, it's slow. That's why you're seeing high smash factor. Um, so I think they're going to get some more accurate club heads and you know, obviously possibly a, a couple other data parameters. Um, Michael Smith, I know the Mevo Plus struggles with putting, but how does it compare to the GC quad and the IXO in the short game? You know, that's a great question. I played an entire uh, tech, two different leagues with Mevo Plus this winter. And in my environment, all right, with a smooth ball rolling, the way I had mine set up, my putting wasn't all that bad. Now, did I have a few struggles? Yes, I did. Which I think most radar units, I would sure other people uh, in the chat would agree, most units, uh, radar units, can struggle with putting sometimes. You could always just take your mulligan. Everybody would play cool. If they saw a putt go way off or something, Skytrack. I had some Skytrack users. You know, there'd be a putt that you know, did whatever. And everybody's cool. Everybody understands. You know, They're like, take a, take a mulligan You know, if the putting went weird. But, you know, uh, short game with Mevo Plus, if you go back to some of my videos, uh, pretty darn good. I mean, I had it dialed, you know. Um, I knew how far to carry it, and uh, and I thought that it did a pretty darn good job. Um, uh, let me try to think on that for a minute on anything. It would, it, it could potentially miss a very low left ball, but even my low bump and runs, if you check those out, it did a darn good job with, with uh, low bump and runs. I still use the Mevo Plus. I'm still testing and using that, just so you guys know. I just did a putting video on it with the well, well putt mat. We this go. guy has good. to make it. I don't know if that's the, look at this. Whoo, just a, just a wee bit of a, oh, 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 oh. Sorry about that. Ended up whoa, that was close. That was close. I was worried about it the whole time. <laughs> that was, that was scary. <laughs> So it has me in light rough now. I didn't, I mean, that was, that was an interesting play there. Wow. That was close. Um, so many Michaels. That's funny. I, I, I honestly was, uh, yeah, I didn't even notice that. But yeah, we do have a ton of Michaels on. Um, have you taken your Mevo Plus outside for range practice? Yeah, there's a video on it. I, I, mean, I was just messing around. But uh, yeah, honestly, I, I need to do more. You're not, you're not kidding. I need to do more outdoor with Mevo Plus um, and mess with it. They were working on several things when I took it outside and was doing different things, you know, updates. And, uh, and so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't continue to do a lot of updates. All the, you know, even our, our local club, uh, Warwick Hills bought one for, you know, uh, teaching, um, which I thought was pretty impressive. Jeez, this is like a, see that water? Look at that. No, well, this is where this course gets tough. Oh, boy. I'm aiming a little right. I don't want to get over there. This is where this course gets tough. Things can change real fast. But, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do some more outdoor testing for you for sure. Um, you know, radar is supposed to perform well outside, so, you know, it should shine. Um, I, had, I had pretty good results, though. Um, Chris says, thanks for all your videos. On IXO range, can you hit to a green like on GC Quad? So, on the view software, okay, and this is something that I might ask them if it's possible or not, but I've heard several people say, you know, what's up with this, this, you know, the range on view, because it looks like it's downhill and stuff like that. I think it's just an image. Like, I think they could throw up an image of a desert, and it's not going to make a difference. It's, you know, that's it's not how it works. I'm going to verify that. Which, I, it's not funny, it's, I was just on the phone with them a little while ago and I was going to ask that and didn't. Um, I'll verify that. I'll verify if the view software ever has anything like that coming. But really the purpose is to get refine or succeed. And they have all of that. You know, they have the ranges. They have the approach, which I've done some videos on. Um, and I'll do more. Uh, but yes, the, uh, the refine and succeed software has all of that. And if you haven't seen it, it's in the channel. Check it out. Um, refine and succeed. Oh boy, guys, I really have to hit a, a solid, a solid five iron is what I have in my hand. This is where, this is where this course gets challenging. I'm going to leave my face just a tad open because I don't want to pull it. That 
that was not a good good strike at all. I was so panicked. Look look out look at that ball strike. How bad that was. Ugh. I didn't stay down on the ball at all. Trying to get you know cute with it. Should have just hit a normal shot. How many times you can answer that question in the chat? Feel free. How many times have you tried to get cute with a shot and end up where I'm at? <laughs> um, and Michael, you had mentioned in a previous video about giving feedback to Unicor about extending the video length of putts. Yes, and it, you know it's there's a lot of parties involved. So um, the North American guys that I usually talk to uh, end up talking to Korea. And you know, making suggestions, and there were a lot of items being fine-tuned because they obviously just you know released everything. And I was trying to give them all the feedback I could. And uh, what am I going to do here? This is sand, so it's going to take a bunch off. Um, I I think I already put that on the list, but I will verify. And I know there's several people that were asking for that, so I'll see if it's possible. Just understand that these cameras are different than QED. They're higher resolution, which is really nice, but they're they're actually zoomed in. That's why a lot of people, it's very important to understand that IXO has a more limited range on the height it can uh, be mounted. And that's because uh, of where it needs to be, you know, for its resolution and how it zooms in. I think it's nine and a half to 10 and a half. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I'm, I'm usually pretty good on that stuff. Nine and a half to 10 and a half where a lot of people were really pushing the limits with QED. People were putting them lower, much higher. And the lower you go, it shrinks your hitting area, you know, below the recommended spec. Higher you go, you actually get a little bigger hitting area. You just can't go too high because then you risk uh, accuracy. So, oh boy, Let's see what I can do here. I guess I should look at the green, huh? Help that, uh, that answers your question. All right, it's uphill, so I can get this there. What's Alan saying? You hit that last shot long, bad angle for that green. Well, that the last shot just sucked. <laughs> oh, or unless you mean my drive, but I think you mean this. That was just a bad, I was aimed over here. I was all panicked about the water. And then I got so panicked, I opened my face up and was like trying to be cute with it. That was just, uh, that was stupid. <laughs> That's how I play real golf outside, trust me. I make mistakes all the time. That's why I'm not a low handicap. Oh, whoa. I mean, it checked up, oh, yeah, thank God. Sand. That's all. Uh, <laughs> but I thought that it was going to take more than that off. That's a greenside bunker. 33 feet to the greenside bunker was supposed to take more than that off. Damn, look what I did to myself. Isn't this a, this a par five I'm on, though? Okay. Well, this isn't this isn't that bad then. No, the drive. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've hey, I've been hitting some decent drives. I guess I did hit it long if you think about it. I didn't really think about the distance, but it, yeah, what did it have to that water? I mean, I must have that sucker must have bounced, huh? Um, you're right. Yeah, the drive almost made the water. I was I was questionable on it. That was suspect. All right. Left to. I mean, it goes left to right, right to left, but a little more left to right out of the gate. So I'm just going to aim maybe left edge. 36 feet. These are so tough. These greens seem to be pretty fast. Now break left. Oh, <laughs> who is still tuned in? Who just saw the 36-foot putt drop? Was that a birdie? Okay, and you're down to two under par now. Two under par? Come on. I should just quit. Okay. I didn't plan on streaming Number that long six. anyway. I mean, before I shank one, get out of here. Get out of here. I mean, I'm pumped. That was just amazing. All right, what do we have here? Hole number six. So 
it's 344. Like you have to hit a you have to hit a light drive. I mean, I could I could get to that water, right? Cuz it's 345 to the pin. I'm only playing the white tees too just so you guys know. I'm not I mean I usually play the blues, but I mean I came down here with zero warm up. I hit a drive. <laughs> I hit one driver and uh oh I'm uh cheating a little bit on the distance. I th I don't know what it was, 4 or 500 yards or something knocked off. I'd have to uh have to look, but Solid swing. That was not a solid swing. Look at where I hit that. I tried to chop a little off because I was worried, and uh, just made a different swing. I mean, that was a that was a different drive for me. That was a heel heel ball, which actually is a miss for me. A, a heel shot on my driver is a miss. That's not totally I'd say uncommon. One hundred and five yards. You know, there's something so to be uh, talked about here. Everybody always talks about the TGC. You know, uh, where it shows that you hit it on the face. A lot of people thought Mevo Plus, it was showing path and all these things. Look at where it hits. Look at where the graphic on TGC shows. Um, something to understand that TGC just estimates all that stuff. Um, let's see here. Uh, do the developers working on Mevo Plus think that with the future updates, they can get the putting under control or will radar units always have the issues? Great putt, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still pumped about that putt. <laughs> um, Alan says, sweet. Uh, let's see here. Uh, if I mean, what have you watched my video where I used well putt? Um, and man, am I not wide angle enough here? I'm not. That's my fault, guys. Look at now you can even see the IXO lights up there. Do you see that? That's my fault. I, I was changing lenses earlier and uh, uh, I, I had my, I just looked over. I was like, why am I not in the, the camera all the way? Um, have you watched my video? Oh, 104. This is so tough for me. I guess I'll, I guess I'll hit my 54, but um, what is it? Alan says putting in the Mevo isn't bad as long as say six feet. Would you agree, Jay? Yeah. And, and guess what? They've already admitted. I mean, even in the very beginning, they said five feet, and now they realize that really under six or seven, you know, can be challenging. And and like I've told everybody, if you play in any of these online tournaments, a lot of places are doing ten foot gimmies. Um, you know, the E six uh, group that I'm in, the Discord channel, uh, that's ten foot gimmies on all the tournaments. A lot of them do ten foot gimmies, and you still can make five six foot putts. I've done it. You have to hit them a little too fast. You know, which it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a challenge, but if you have not watched my recent putting videos, check them out. Um, it actually does a decent job. For, I mean, you're talking two grand unit radar and uh, set up even, you know, I guess I'm seven feet and that's what putting is recommended. But that well putt mat, I think made a difference. I think that, and don't get me wrong, I have a very smooth surface, but if you don't have a smooth surface, you're cheating yourself. It, it needs a smooth surface. These greens are so small. I hit that well. Ooh, it looks like that was the well. club. That was the club. Checked up just a little bit. I had some spin on it. Ninety-one oh seven. Not bad. Not bad for a fit light fifty-four. You know, I'm playing a Pro V one. If anybody's wondering. Um, what's Michael Smith saying? I know watching your videos in the past, 10 feet and under was sometimes questionable. Yeah, I wouldn't say 10 feet and under. And I think most people that have played with me or watched the videos have seen me hit enough putts, you know, shorter than 10 feet where it can, if you have a good environment, I think you're fine, you know, but under that six, seven foot range. Yeah. Yeah. You're, it's going to be a challenge because it, it, it's not even, it, they tell you it's not made for putts under you know, like five, six feet. I mean, they'll just tell you that. And they may even adjust that number a little bit. Originally, it wasn't it wasn't set at five feet. I know that it was very early product. And uh, Alex was at the PGA show. And I think he might have stated five feet, you know, um, but it's not like he was making a guarantee at that, that, that stage. I mean, they were just demoing the unit. 
Um, in a perfect scenario, could you sink a five foot putt? Absolutely. I've done it many times. Does TGC 2019 have support for multiple players in the same household, different tees, profile scores? Yes, it does. I play down here with my family and friends all of the time. Um, my wife actually doesn't appreciate that she can't uh, edit the female player enough. <laughs> I think you have to like buy, you know, or, or do something to get the clothes and the looks and everything like that. If you just use like the default looks, um, she's like, that doesn't look like me. Um, so we always get a kick out of that. But uh, yes, you can. My kids always love setting up their own person. They play at the, the kids' tees when we play, you know, parents versus kids and everything. Um, you totally can. Absolutely. All right. I just need to sync this. Look at that run. Look at that run. Someone is ringing my doorbell right now, and I apologize, guys. Let me uh, see what's going on really quick. Um, you know what? I might have to jump off here. Um, I, I'll tell you what I can do. I can pause it really quick. So I'll leave you guys on hold. Um, give me just a second. I'll be right back.
All right, where's my putter at? 13 feet. Had to take a break there for a second. Looks like everybody stayed tuned in, which I appreciate. Let's see what we can do. I don't like this break at all. 11 feet to the cup. It's an uphill putt. Oh boy. Let's see. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I forgot I had somebody stopping over to grab something. And, uh, you know, hey, that's live video, right? Just keep rolling with it. Now I have to see if I can make this putt and keep the flow going. Break. <sighs> Kept it going. <laughs> this is hilarious. I can't believe I'm playing this course this well. I mean, it's a fun course. The the greens are difficult. Three under. I'm gonna finish out this nine, I think. If uh, you know, as long as everybody's gonna okay. to hang tight, and ask any more questions you have. I mean, we had some great conversation there. I appreciate everybody, uh, you know, getting engaged with the whole conversation. So, with it, why do they have five iron? That makes no sense. I'm I'm knocking driver down there. I mean, I guess I can see. That's clear. Definitely want to aim a little left, like right here. It's not bad. You have to watch TGC sometimes. You can see how it had me aimed a little left right there. Um, anybody that plays it, you know, just, just use your Q button. That's the Q, uh, you know, the button that I use all the time. You just hit your Q, it, it throws you up there. You know, change your, your club that you're hitting and it gives you an idea, you know, of, uh, you know, where, you know, depending on how far you hit it. I mean, you gotta understand it's gonna be different. Um, let's see if I can get another drive down. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'd like to finish the nine, depending on how, how fast I can uh, get through everything here. Oh, why can't I get these drives outside when they really matter? I mean, not that I don't want to hit some good drives when we're live on YouTube, but I mean... The driver has just been on tonight. <clears throat> 268 yards. I mean, that's that's a great okay, drive for me. 200 yards out here. Oh, that's a long, long second shot. I mean, I can try to get one there. Might as well. Yeah, sorry about the little break there. Figured better off than just cutting off. Why not just uh, just pause for a second? You know. All right. I did not hit this five iron that well last time. Let's see if I can do a little better. Did the same thing. I don't know if this has enough. What am I doing? That was just terrible. I hit it just a little behind the ball. Um, at least I'm gonna give myself a second shot. Yeah, just a really poor swing. And that's, that's been my club lately, you know, those longer irons, you know, five, six, um, really have been helping me out on the course. Now I have to see what I can do with my wedge here. One close, 66 yards. We're in the fairway at least. Nice. Get down. A little too much. Eh, a little backspin on that. That checked up a little bit. 94.23. When I get that spin above 9,000, TGC, I have the green set to soft. Okay, so um, they'll check up for you. Man, I just blew it by again, though. That just kills you. Just kills you. Need to make another 36 foot putt. That's for sure. I think I have a straight putt. That's just a little left to right. Let's see here.
36 feet. What's uh, Alan saying? Michael says, which is which SIM software is the best for the money? <laughs> but, you know, we talked about the SIM software a little bit earlier, and uh, it's it's personal preference, honestly. Um, you know, I mean, if, if you have a budget and you're not looking for ongoing expense, a lot of people like the price of TGC. I think it's at like 960 right now. And uh, it's a one-time purchase. Then if, if they come out with TGC 2020 or something that's compatible, uh, or 2021, whatever it may be, there's usually an uh, upgrade fee. But it's set it. There's no subscription or anything. E6 is a little different. Like I have a subscription from Evo Plus, Unicor, and, and those are yearly subscriptions. You can get like a $300 a year subscription. It includes all the updates. It includes peer-to-peer -peer play and everything. Very different. Um, it's the short downhill putts on Mevo Plus to me difficult. 100%, Alan. I mean, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Alex says he just ran across the channel. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're trying to grow the channel, and it's for things just like this. I mean, we get a lot of people uh, that, that tune in. I, I, I feel like I'm just going to putt this left edge. Um, and a lot of people that give opinions and share feedback with each other. So make sure you subscribe. I appreciate it. 36 feet. Is it going to get there? Oh, it had a look. It had a look. I feel like I at least have the putting down. I mean, I, that had a chance. That had a chance. All right, so is that a bogey? No, I'm still three under. That was, that was par five. That was par five. Rock and roll. Eighth hole coming up here. Steve so says TGC is shot. awesome, mainly because of the graphics and the accuracy of so many courses. I'd get TGC over E6. I own QED and TGC. See, there you go. There's another opinion right there. Um, and I and I do really like the TGC graphics. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, try to pick on it a little bit because the buildings are not uh uniquely designed and the trees aren't uniquely designed but i think they have a, a a nice variety and you don't notice i don't think a lot of people notice you know honestly um but like you know like the some a lot of courses i've been to if you look the building is generic it's not like the same e6 prides himself on at you know accurately you know designing every single building and everything like that so you know but the graphics are awfully crisp on tgc I mean, they really, are. I'll tell you who has crisp graphics that I've demoed a lot is uh, Creative Golf 3D. Totally different type of graphic engine. Totally different. Um, it, it, but they're very crisp. <laughs> I mean, very crisp. I need to birdie this and see how far under we can go on the front nine. I mean, I feel like we're, we're in contention here. This is, this is incredible. Be good. Oh, it's going left. Get down and stay. All right. I think that's a decent putt. Hey, these greens are small. I'm sticking them. I mean, uh, I haven't played this well in a while. Here's I'll be honest with you. Birdie. I'll take this all day long. All right, what do we got here? Thanks for the info, Alan and Steve. Awesome. Uh, Alex says I'm looking at doing a home simulator in the garage as I have a kid on the way. I won't get to go to the course much. No, yeah, that's a, a really good point. Depending on your lifestyle, what if you just can't play outside? What if you work all day long? Um, it's a very good point. That's what simulation is allowing a lot of people to do. I mean, how about in my climate here in Michigan? It's terrible. In the winter, I mean, unless you're traveling, which no one's traveling right now. Um, I mean, it, it, it's it's huge. I think it helped me a ton this winter. I was leaning towards GC2 because I have ball speed with driver about 180. Anything else I should look at? I did subscribe. Awesome. Um, I, I'd love somebody to try to say something bad about GC2. I mean, I've never even tried it, and I can basically tell you that it's a fantastic unit. Um, you should shoot me an email because I can give you a direct connection that I have, um, you know, and I'll get you a, a quote on it um, for my connection. I'll give you all the exact information, answer your questions. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. If you want something else, I have connections with everything. But um, I've never used GC2, and yet I can sit here and confidently say, that it's a fantastic unit because I've talked to so many people and it's been out for so long. Um, 
over 10 years now, I think is what it is. Um, it's a it's a great unit. They're still selling it new today. Um, it's just a great unit. So um, feel free to shoot me an email. My email is in the description in the comments. You know, I'd love to help. Um, but I mean, I it, as far as anything else you should look at, I mean, everything in my channel is pretty much all the latest, greatest other than, I mean, I even demoed TrackMan on the channel. So um, it's all there. I mean, I could tell you that they're all good units. Just, I mean, as always, I'm never trying to push anybody towards anything. I would rather help answer questions and give you any feedback that I can, at least based on facts or what you can see in the channel. And uh, you pick what works best in your environment. If you're looking at something like GC2 camera based, what's nice is, is they don't need a lot of space. You know, the Unicor systems don't need a lot of space. If you're looking at radar, you can have some space constraints. You know, obviously, depending on your budget, you're going to get, you know, better results. Um, just facts of life. I mean, you know, it's not that they're all not decent, but um, <clears throat> what else we got here? Alan says, Jay, nice part about TGC is I like the local courses. You're not kidding. I, I have my local course I play at in TGC, and it's LIDAR. Um, so, uh, I totally agree. I mean, in it, it, I'll tell you what, the undulations of the green, like I know where to land balls. Like it's, I, I, I don't disagree at all. Now it looks a little cookie cutter cause none of the houses look, look like they do on my course and stuff. I mean, they're placed in the right spot, but, um, you're absolutely right. It is, uh, it's very cool to have that selection. So, I mean, all my local courses. I've played a couple of them in the channel. Oh, it was a poor putt. I almost yipped it. I just, just didn't, didn't, didn't get it there. Oh, that's too bad. That is just too bad. It's going to keep me three under, but I had a chance. I could have, I had a chance of making that. I just got, I almost like got scared. You know, I just didn't hit it as hard as I should. Um, Rock, GC2 is awesome, but looking at IXO for overhead. And see, there you go. That's exactly what I was talking about, that if you're looking for a unit uh, that you want permanently mounted, all right, um, out of the way, you know, not looking for portability or anything like that, um, that IXO is a great choice. And the QED is a great uh, I mean, there's, there's fantastic, you know, selection out there to choose from really has to do with user it really does. Um, Michael says, are you hitting from 10 feet away from the screen? And in your opinion, what's the minimum distance? So we talked about this briefly in a video a little while ago. I am just over 10 feet to my screen. I think it's like 10 feet, five inches. I want to say, um, I can't hit a drive to that water. I mean, there's no way I'm going for it. I'll aim just a little bit. Right. But. I think I'm fine if I can have one more good drive. Um, it depends on your screen, though. If you are 10 feet from your screen and end up buying like a high rebound screen or something like that, it could be dangerous. If you hit it in a high rebound area low, you know, you hit a, a, a driver low, that ball can come flying back. So it's a safety concern that you need to consider uh, when you're talking distance. Yes. There is distance requirements for different units as well. But if you're talking like, let's say, a camera unit that only looks at a window, you really need to consider safety. I'm very lucky. I have a very nice screen. It, it consists of a proprietary, uh, sorry, I'm having a tough time even talking, three-layer screen, a very soft, high-definition front, all right, that's very easy to replace, foam-filled with a backer screen behind it. It absorbs balls fantastic i mean it does a fantastic job of absorbing the golf ball i've had people down here crank, you know 300 plus yard drives no problem the ball basically comes rolling back so safety is something that you really need to consider how did i get away playing this whole round oh no stop 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 Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Um, how did I get away this whole round hitting drives like that? And yet I duck hooked one out on the course today. Just duck hooked one. Um, 
I guess that's golf, isn't it? I was just talking about that earlier. I mean, that's golf. Totally golf. Um, if you were me, I had a choice between GC and IXO, I'd go IXO simply for overhead. But just remember, Steve, if that fits your space, you know, I had a guy that had like a 30 foot ceiling or something and no way to mount the IXO. And he ended up having to go with a camera, you know, um, so, you know, floor, floor unit. Um, so, you know, it has to fit the person, but I mean, it's, it's total personal preference. I appreciate you sharing your, uh, you know, your choice there. Um, Paul says, I love TGC course designer. See, that's really, I don't have time for that, but that is really cool. I talk to a lot of people that design courses. Um, I think that's awesome. I'd love to learn how to do it someday. I just don't have the time. Uh, Alan says, keep this up and you could win on Sunday. Three under so far for nine is great. Isn't it crazy? I can't believe I'm three under right now. It's, it's nuts. Um, headed to the garage when you wrap up to try to beat that score. All right, get it on camera. Let's see it. <laughs> I'm going to finish up here in just a second. And you compare the feeling between your HD golf mat and the others like fiber built or true strike. So there's a reason I can't do that is that I've never hit on a fiber built or true strike. I can go only go off of what other people have told me, but I can tell you this, I've hit on a lot of commercial mats in my day. Um, I've been down to commercial facilities, driving ranges and everything. And let me tell you, it's a major difference between this soft strike mat and any of those mats, major difference. I mean, if you hit enough balls on those mats um, and I like taking a little divot after hitting the ball, um, you know, and you don't want to change your swing for indoor golf. Um, it can hurt your elbows. It can hurt your wrists. Let me tell you. So I need to stick this close. What is this? The par four? I'm sticking this close. I got to have confidence, right? Roll up there. Roll up there. Stop. Is that a birdie? Are we going to finish four under? The confidence. I was like, I'm sticking this close. <laughs> Look at it. It was a little bit of a toe shot. <laughs> four, under par after that hole. four under par. You got to be kidding me. I haven't played this good since, and, I don't uh, even know, junior golf. <laughs> um, Michael says, sorry for all the Mevo Plus questions. No, don't be sorry. Ask away, man. I mean, anything... Uh, anything you want. I mean, everybody that, you know, subscribes to the channel and especially everybody that engages in the comments and everything we've tried here. Uh, I mean, we've tried it all. So, I mean, I don't care if you're got, a, if you got a question on the swing caddy that we've, that we've tested before, you know, speak up. I mean, that's why I do these. I mean, these aren't for my enjoyment guys. I mean, I have fun doing this stuff, but that's not the purpose. You know, the purpose is to help everybody out there share information, um, Steve, what's your handicap? You can look me up on gin, my friend. I am currently, I think it says 12.9. I shot, uh, what did I shoot, an 8 or a, I shot, I shot a 39 and 43 the other day. Is that because we were playing match play in a tournament? Um, that was my, my, my two best nine. I shot an 89 today. I went out and I birdied a hole. I was parring holes. And then I threw up a, I think, a snowman. <laughs> And then I threw up a par, par, seven on a par four. I hit a five on a par three. It just went, I was like, I was so frustrated. But I shot an 89 on my local course today. And I've been like right there trying to break 80, you know, getting to the 70s. I, I, I used to be able to play in the 70s when I was a lot younger. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm about a 12 right now. So um, I'm, not a, I'm not a four under at Muirfield Village. <laughs> I wish I could just hit my drive like that and I probably would have you know gotten the low 80s today geez might have broke broke 80 but uh Michael says great nine holes thanks for the great info heck yeah anytime anytime um you know if you guys don't have any other questions uh I'll sign off here in a second as always just appreciate everybody watching now um, if you know anybody that might be able to use the channel for information um or you have suggestions or anything you know share the channel subscribe. I appreciate it. It helps grow everything. You know, it helps me provide more to you guys. 
Um, and then uh, feel free to shoot me an email, you know, whether it be, hey, I'd like to see this or I have a question, you're looking for a product and I can connect you with somebody because all my connections, I, I make strict agreements, you know, with these guys that you are going to give the best customer service. I want the best price for all my viewers. I don't want to get somebody coming back saying this guy you referred me to, you know, is a, is a joker. That's not the case. And let me tell you, I've referred hundreds of people haven't had that one time. So um, that's important to me. It really is. I, I want everybody to be taken care of. So um, great video tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it was so random too. I was like, we need to do a live video. So I appreciate all you guys watching. Um, like I said, feel free to email. Have a great day.